Hi everybody, welcome back to Cosmos. A very quick update on the calibration video of this uh, witchy timing machine. Um, a viewer, Gregory West, commented on the video and suggested that uh, if it were his, he would have drilled a hole in the back giving quick access to the little trimmer cap uh, that is used to uh, calibrate the, the rate of, of, the, of, of the machine. Uh, and then maybe plug it with a little plug so that it gave easy access for later. And that, that's a good idea. And at first I said to myself, well, it's a good idea, but I don't see myself having to open this machine much. I mean, I've had, you know, this machine's been around for the last maybe 12 or 14 years, and it's only needed to be calibrated once, so kind of why go to the trouble of drilling a hole, you know, just for, the, for, for once every 14 years or something. However, uh, <laughs> I think the day or so after I filmed the calibration of this, I clumsily um, snagged the cable uh, of the microphone and dragged the machine off the bench and uh, kind of went crashing to the ground. <laughs> and it's fine, the machine's okay. Disaster, you know, I was very, very fortunate there was no major disaster with it, but. Remember I mentioned how the little standoffs inside that hold the circuit board to the, to the body were quite fragile. So something's a bit of plastic, I think, has busted off inside there. And so that's really going to annoy me. So I'm going to open the machine again. And seeing as I will have it open, I decided to follow Greg West's idea and drill a hole. And I bought from uh, Farnell Element 14 these little uh, plastic plugs, um, which are just, you know, they just pop in from outside. I think, uh, according to the technical documentation, I think it, it wants a 5.6 millimeter hole. So we'll just have a slightly closer look at these little, little plugs. And they're little blanking plugs exactly for this kind of purpose, so as you can see, they've got a kind of flare that'll keep them in the hole, and we, we want to drill something like the minor diameter. It doesn't. It, there's no real precision required, and so just with a knife blade or whatever, later we can pop that out of the hole. Of course, it may not be easy to get the exact positioning uh, of the hole over the the cap, but you know we'll try and see how it goes. Um, and so, you know, so kind of while, as I'm opening this anyway, we'll try that. There is other news as well, and this is time sensitive. Um, and that is, um, I noticed that a company I uh, have, you know, bought quite a few things from, based in Germany, called Bicotechnic. Uh, there you can see their name again. I'm using my iPad, so sorry about the reflections. But Bicotechnic is a really, really good. Uh, watchmaking tools and supplies uh, company based in Germany, very professional, very very helpful. Um, you know, can't fault them really. I have you know the highest praise. I have nothing. You know, uh, all usual disclaimers. I have nothing to do with them other than being a very happy customer. And I was on their website, and I noticed on the home page there was a link um, to their service and calibration weeks. And in fact, they are offering, uh, so they are witchy agents, and they have uh, these weeks between the 15th of December and the 15th of February, so we still have about six weeks of this left, where they are offering a special deal on the calibration of witchy timing machines of all various kinds. Uh, and there's a PDF that we can go to that just explains a bit more in detail. And so what they're offering is a calibration service as an official agent. And during that time, they will lend you um, a replacement machine, presumably uh, across Europe. I'm not sure that they do that worldwide. Um, and so free loan appliance during the maintenance phase, free collection and delivery service by UPS within Germany. So presumably if it's outside Germany, you'd have to pay for the carriage, but that's not going to be a lot. Um, you'll be credited the service and calibration costs if you buy a new witchy instrument by the 31st of December this year, 2017. Um, and then on the next page there is a price list. 
And in fact, they are offering the calibration for around 140 euros for most machines. Some of the machines are slightly more expensive. And so, for example, most of these machines here, 140, there's one there for 190, which is the Chronoscope M10. I saw one for 350, which was the Chronoscope M20. And I think the one at the bottom, the Q-Test, which is a quartz tester, quartz watch tester, uh, is... Um, 290 yeah 290 euros but for example the watch expert uh, is the first one in the list there uh, 140 euros which is a lot cheaper than sending it back to switzerland and presumably all the trouble of sending it across the border uh, even though switzerland is part of the common market they do still have certain uh controls over you know goods in and out uh, whereas across the European Union, there's no such thing. Um, and so I, I wanted to draw viewers' attention to this in case anybody fancied getting the work done, you know, by an official witchy agent. And I reckon that it's 140 euros very well spent because, like I said in the last video, the time that it took me to faff about with this. And also, you know, it's um, it doesn't come with a traceability, so you're going to get a certificate and so on. So uh, if you're at all interested and don't fancy fiddling about with the machine like I did, I would uh, hurry on over to Beco Technic and uh, you will not be disappointed with the service you get from those people. So that's that. I will now um, take this machine to pieces, re-glue the broken piece. I haven't, I haven't opened it to see exactly what it is that's broken, so maybe we can just um, have a quick look. I've lost my little green um, green rubber mat. It's uh, it's it's gone walkabout. So uh, well, I can use something else. It's not really necessary. And half the time, I think I put things down to protect my bench, which I think you'll agree is um, uh, well. It's a nicely finished bench. Um, so half the time, I'm protecting the bench rather than protecting the work. Uh, so, uh, and I know I'm resting it on the little knob um, but I'm not putting a lot of force on there and it's only going to be for a few minutes I should really start learning to film from the left because um, I'm right-handed, so half the time you've got my great hairy paw uh, in the shot. So the moment of truth, let's see how much damage I've caused by smashing the machine on the ground. Oh, so it's not too bad. Uh, I think it's just rebroken something that was already busted out before, which was one of the little plastic pegs. So I'm just about seeing that very dark corner. That uh, that's been busted out there, uh, and as I say, that has that was broken out before. So I probably won't show that on film. Uh, oh, there's another bit here that's loose. So that's loose, I'll have to re-glue that. This other one is okay. And these top two are all right. So um, not too bad, really, all things considered. I probably won't show this on film, but I, I will get back to you once we're ready to drill the hole in the case back. The viewer who commented on the video and suggested the thing about um, using these little caps. Uh, also pointed out that uh, it might be useful for me to mention that uh, static charges can be qu quite deadly to integrated circuits like that, you know, especially some types of integrated circuit. 
are much more sensitive to static discharge. And of course, you know, um, going around, one might not be aware whether or not your own body is carrying a static charge at a given moment. I did refer to uh, that in passing in the video about calibrating this thing, where I said that I would just touch a grounding surface, uh, and I have some trunking on the back of my bench, which currently is exposed because I'm doing some work on the um, on the airline. Um, but there are some electrical sockets, as you can see, and the trunking is um, is earthed to you know earth ground proper mains earth. So sorry about the shaky camera. So you can see this uh, trunking along the edge of my bench, um, but there is just behind that little uh, box there's um, a place because actually the, the two trunks meet at that point and they are electrically connected uh, to each other so that I can get a common ground uh, along the full length. I think the whole length of this bench is mm, that's over four meters um, and so I touched inside there just to touch the ground during speaking in that video because I am aware of the problem of uh, potential problem of static discharge now, uh, if you watch people on YouTube who are proper, you know, like electronic lab, they will often attach a, a strap to their wrist that is then uh, plugged into a socket uh, on the bench that is positively, you know, definitely grounded. Um, so, yeah, do be aware that static can affect uh, integrated circuit like that. If you wanted a very um, definite path to ground, go and touch the cold water pipe. So, you know, go to the kitchen sink or whatever and, um, and touch, touch the, the water pipe because that's where household earth uh, is um, often connected is to, to the water pipe. Well, I don't know if it still is, but that was usually the way. Uh, to to earth everything through the cold water pipes because they get buried deep in the, the actual earth and they were typically copper or some other metal and um, that is a very good earth but in any event do be careful of integrated circuits because they they can be quite sensitive to static and I, I um, as I say I mentioned it in passing in that video but I didn't make a you know a big point about it but it is worth mentioning, you know, to people perhaps only interested in watchmaking, you might not be aware. A good idea to to earth yourself before touching or working on any um, on any you know silicon microchips. So the epoxy I've used on the little uh, standoffs is uh, slow setting, and as you see, there it's still kind of in the gel phase. So it'll be many hours before this sets sets up enough for me to reassemble the machine. But in the meantime, we can carry on with uh, the drilling of the uh, the hole in the back plate. So just as a refresher, there's a little cap uh, or trimmer that adjusts the frequency uh, of the device. I'm just going to give this a dry installation just to... kind of assess uh, the position yeah so it does kind of this the board does register fairly well on the on the little standoffs so I think we can take some measurements um, X and Y and I might drill a, a smaller pilot hole in case it's and then in case it's off I can I can move the hole with the file rather than go straight in at the full size and, you know, be quite annoying if that was out by, you know, half, half the diameter or something. At this point, I'm just switching into post-production voiceover because the next sequence of video shows me going to some lengths of measuring the exact position of that capacitor. However, I'd like to take the opportunity to forewarn anyone who wants to do this that it was all for nothing because I should have only uh, looked at the back plate in situ to realize that the capacitor is actually accessible through the little vent hole or the little grill, the speaker grill. And it took me 
a long time to discover that. So I, I, I measured the X and Y coordinates of that little cap, transferred them onto the back of that back plate, um, marked them off very carefully, and it was only right at the end when I realized that the, the center of that hole fell more or less on a vent. So I'll switch to what happened after that, which was basically me, you know, putting the machine back together and saying that I decided not to proceed with the alteration as originally planned. At this point, I'd also like to say that in the last video I mentioned about the printer output, there's a, there's a printer port visible, uh, and I wondered whether the machine would print uh, if only you could print, you know, if you could plug a printer into it, because on my model of machine there is a little blanking piece uh, over the, um, you know, the little blanking plate over, over the printer port. Uh, I can report to you that this was not successful. There must be a, a software uh, update that results in, uh, in the printer being able to be used. And it's not available on this machine, even if you do manage to get, uh, you know, um, printer connected to it, it, it doesn't do anything. Mm. This does not bode well for Greg West's idea. The hole falls pretty much exactly on the edge of that uh, little vent. And to my eye, that's going to be untidy. I don't think that's an aesthetically pleasing outcome to try and put a hole over there. I'm sorry, Greg, I think I'm going to abandon that idea. And really, I should have noticed that if I'd only just uh, looked to begin with. Uh, there you can see the cap just peeping out through that little vent hole, which means you could probably get a, a small screwdriver in, uh, in through that vent anyway, although that's you know a bit of a messy way of working. But I don't think it's a pleasing solution to have a hole, you know, in the end of that and put a cap over it. I just think that's, uh, you know, it's kind of something not right about that particular layout. I imagine that the hole was going to fall around there, in which case it would have been okay. So, first of all, you can get a watchmaker screwdriver down there and just about see the whole head of that um, trimmer cap. Uh, and so, as it is, uh, yeah, I've decided now not to not to proceed with that idea. So I think the next job is really just to leave this glue to set, and I'll reassemble the uh, the piece tomorrow. And I now have, you know, <laughs> like a pound eighties worth of uh, of these little things. I, by the way, I bought these in conjunction with a bunch of other stuff, so I didn't I didn't pay for the postage particularly. Uh, just on these really cheap little caps. So they'll come in useful somewhere else. Uh, so that's that update, <laughs> which hasn't resulted in very much, but uh, it, it is an outcome. You know, a decision not to proceed for a good reason is an outcome. Um, and so we'll leave it at that. And I'll reassemble this off camera. And yeah, maybe that was useful. And don't forget about Beco and their calibration weeks. Uh, if you've got one of these machines that need calibrating, you could well use their services. So thanks for watching and see you next time.